Manula Sweeney in London. Welcome to CNN's International Correspondence, where we examine how the media are covering the big stories. This week, the axe falls on the BBC. The corporation announces major cuts to news and factual programming. Also coming up, the state of the world when it comes to press freedom. We map out the best and the worst countries. Plus, saving the planet, why the media needs rescuing, according to journalist turned author Mort Rosenblum. Well, after months of speculation, the BBC has announced widespread budget cuts, which will result in a net loss of 1,800 jobs. News and factual production are to be hardest hit under the reform program, which will also see the BBC's television centre in London sold off. An estimated 2,500 positions will be slashed over six years, but BBC chiefs say the impact on staff will be lessened by new investment that will create jobs and natural staff turnover. The cuts come as the public broadcaster attempts to fill a $4 billion budget deficit. Earlier, I spoke to the BBC's Deputy Director General, Mark Byford. I asked, given the corporation is renowned for its news and programming, why the cuts are targeting those areas. If the BBC is getting a, a, a lesser licence fee than it had hoped for and is searching for efficiency, its journalistic or, uh, organisation is the backbone of the organisation, it can't be immune from efficiency. We're looking at where we can reduce duplication, where we can promote multimedia working so that we can invest for the future in our interactive and our online work and make the BBC's journalism actually even stronger in the long term. If the BBC stood still, if the BBC did nothing, our audiences, particularly younger audiences, mm. would move away. And what we want to do is to ensure that the content that we bring, you're right, high quality distinctive uh, programming, can then be made available on all the platforms that our audiences want to get us access to us. A former BBC colleague was uh, telling me just a few moments ago that, uh, for example, the domestic services, radios 2, 3, 4 and 5, have different... Uh, news bulletins compiled by different producers. I mean, is that something that you're looking at or is it your commitment to high distinctive quality programming that requires you to have different news uh, bulletins at the top of the hour presented and also compiled by different producers? Well, nobody is saying here, including me as the head of the journalism, that the BBC's services must have a homogeneity of sound. It must all sound the same, that the same bulletin for Radio 2 as there is for Radio 5 Live, as there would be for the World Service. Of course not. We want to ensure that our different audiences get a BBC News that is tailored uh, to their agenda and to their liking. But presumably but that is somewhere means, you could cut But money. it also means... If I may say, if it, it also means that we're absolutely under a duty to look at in that journalistic organisation where can we find uh, uh, efficiencies so that we can invest in the new technologies for the long term. We have found that we can reduce duplication. We should, as a broadcaster who is involved in TV, radio and online, reorganize ourselves for the digital age into a multimedia outfit. CNN, by the way, does exactly the same thing. All broadcasting organizations are doing this as they uh, enter the digital age. It means that the commitment to quality and distinctiveness to our global agenda with correspondence around the whole world, an intelligent agenda continues. What we want to do, though, is to be able to be as lean and as strong value for money as we possibly can be for the people that own the BBC, which is the public of the United Kingdom. And of course, CNN does do the same thing, but CNN is totally and wholly reliant on advertising. And the question is, this has all come about because the government refused to increase the licence fee to the BBC's uh, satisfaction. So do you feel as an organisation that you're constantly being undermined financially? No, we don't. We recognise that it's a privilege to have the licence fee. It's a privilege that uh, everybody around the United Kingdom funds the BBC. But the licence peer expects the BBC to be focused on high quality content and it also expects the BBC to be making the money that's given to us to be squeezed such that we produce as much value as we possibly can in content. And that's what Delivering Creative mm. Future is about. Mark Byford speaking to me earlier. Well, for more on the impact of BBC job cuts and what they mean for the future of the corporation, I'm joined by Charlie Beckett, the director of Polis, the journalism think tank of the London School of Economics.
Why particularly journalists? I mean, the BBC is such a huge organisation with so many different interests and departments. And as I put it to Mark Byford, known around the world, particularly for its news and journalism. So why would journalists be the first, or, or, or as we expect, be the most that will be t take the brunt of the cuts? Mm. I mean, is it warranted? Well, I think at one level it certainly is, because in fact the BBC has taken years to get anywhere near catching up with other broadcasters and uh, journalistic organisations who have realised all these benefits from new technology and multi-skilling means that you should be leaner and meaner. Why has it taken them so long to get to that point? But I do, on the other hand, I think there is a sense that why pick on that core value that the BBC stands for and that it does best and is the one thing that they are going to need, whatever else they do in the future, is their news. And I think that it's a, a missed opportunity. They seem to be picking on the journalists and not taking hard decisions about other parts of the BBC. Where should the BBC be focusing now in terms of its journalism and its direction? And is new technology going to account for most of the job losses? I think so. And if you look at most broadcasting organisations, they have actually lost more jobs on the technical side than the editorial side. But the, the environment that we're all moving into, a more digital online environment, does mean you do not need 20 BBC producers at every court case or every international summit. Mm. Uh, you're much more able to replicate what you do. And I think in that sense, the BBC is right to send this big signal to their staff, get online, get digital, that's where the money's going. And do you think in terms of the BBC's future, is it being squeezed by the government to go down more and more of a privatisation route, something Mark Byford denies? I think privatisation is in a sense a distraction but I cannot believe that the BBC funding system will be the same in 10 years possibly as soon as five years but that's got as much to do with going online and finding different models to to show people that you you're giving them value as it is about the idea that somehow anyone's gonna buy the BBC Charlie Beckett thank you very much up next on International Correspondence, the results are in. The country's rated best and worst when it comes to press freedom. Find out who tops the list and those rated lowest when we return. <laughs>